Uh, it is 6.07 p.m. I'll call the council meeting to order. Today is May 17th, and it is, as I said, 6.07. Our first item on the agenda is roll call, or call to order, and everybody is present and present in the council chambers. Next item is Pledge of Allegiance and Silent Prayer in lieu of Invocation. If everybody could please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm in. Our next item on our agenda is the ceremonial oaths of office. The first one would be in the badge pitting. The first one would be Fire, Fire Chief Todd Eckes. Okay, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Todd Eckes. I, Todd Eckes. Having been duly selected. Having been duly selected. To serve as chief. To serve as chief. Of the fire department. Of the fire department. For the city of Wisconsin Rapids. For the city of Wisconsin Rapids. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of the state of Wisconsin. And of the state of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge. And will faithfully discharge. The duties of said office. The duties of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. And the next one is uh, Interim Police Chief Mike Pataki. All right, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Michael S. Pataki. I, Michael S. Pataki. Having been duly selected. Having been duly selected. To serve as Interim Chief. To serve as Interim Chief. Of the Police Department. Of the police department for the city of Wisconsin Rapids. For the city of Wisconsin Rapids. <clears throat> do hereby solemnly swear. Do, bear, do hereby solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States and of the state of Wisconsin. And of the state of Wisconsin. And will faithfully dis discharge. And will faithfully discharge the duties of said office. The duties of said office to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. We have a son, Cody, who is a Portage County deputy, and Mike's father, Stan, was the Portage County Sheriff. And now we have Interim Deputy Chief, Scott DeWitt. All right, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Scott DeWitt. I, Scott DeWitt. Having been duly selected. Having been duly selected. To serve as Interim Deputy Chief. To serve as interim deputy chief of the police department of the police department for the city of Wisconsin Rapids for the city of Wisconsin Rapids to hereby solemnly swear to hereby solemnly swear 
That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of the state of Wisconsin. And of the state of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge. And will faithfully discharge. The duties of said office. The duties of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody. If you want to sneak out at this time, would be the right time. Okay, let's move on to item number five, which is the reading of the minutes of the previous meetings held April 14th and April 19th. See attachments one and two in your packet. <coughs> we have a motion by Dean. And a second by Ryan. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. We're moving on to item six, with a, which is a presentation by Jerry Bach regarding a petition from residents regarding the cleanup of Northern Steel Casting property. And I do not see Jerry here. Mike? Are you in his stead or? This is Mike Hittner. Mike Hittner here, uh, Mayor Blazer, members of the Common Council, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm not here in Jerry Stead. I signed the petition, but uh, we all know what that eyesore looks like. And my understanding, they haven't paid taxes t since 2019. And uh, I don't know how industrial uh, condemnation works, but in most areas, if there's a significant fire, if it'd be a retail establishment, they'd have to be on it within a year or so, either to rebuild or to tear it down. So. I think we got a $27 million YMCA there. We got a nice boys and girls club. It's an eyesore in the community. You got some nice housing there. I think it's time for the city to do some work. Now, certainly, uh, there's going to be, have to be remediation there. Now, we also know that was a, a county garage at one time, so there's pollution from the county there and pollution certainly from northern steel casting. So I would hope that the Common Council with the mayor's help would move this forward so that this project is uh, completed and we can use that property for a proper purpose. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mike. What we'll do is just have this as a referral then to finance and property, would it be? Okay. Sounds good. I saw Jerry today, so I'm surprised he, unless he's thinking it starts at seven. Uh, item number seven, then, is consider for confirmation of Mayor Blazer's appointments to various committees, commission, and boards. See attachment three. Good 
move to approve, Mayor. The motion by Ryan, Mayor second Wood. by Matt. Sorry. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Tyler Dean's button's not working. Oh. There we go. That motion carried 8 A's, 0 nays. We're on to item 8, consider for adoption the action of the Planning Commission at its meeting held on May 2nd. Uh, Kyle? I can read it too if you want. You seem to be better at uh, abbreviating it. That's up to you, Mayor. I just happened to pull it open, so I am ready to go here. The Plan Commission met at 4 p.m. on May 2nd, 2022, in the Wisconsin Rapids Council Chambers uh, and via remote audio conferencing. Members present uh, are on a list in our office, uh, uh, but there was a quorum of Plan Commissioners in attendance. The meeting was called to order at 4.02 p.m. Item one was approval of the report from the April 18th, 2022 Plan Commission meeting. Motion by Goudreau to approve the reports from the April 18th Plan Commission meeting. Second by Davin. Motion carried 6-0. Item two was uh, an update regarding the Vandewall and Associates Wisconsin Rapids Recovery and Redevelopment Plan. Uh, Director Kearns provided a brief update regarding the upcoming planning charrette for Plan Commission and Common Council, as well as the uh, public visioning workshop, which is scheduled for June 1st at the McMillan Library. Item three is the election of a vice chairperson, motion by Goudreau to nominate Ryan Austin as vice chairperson for the Plan Commission, second by Feith. Mr. Austin, Austin accepted the nomination. No members were opposed. Motion by Blazer to appoint Ryan Austin as vice chairperson for the plan commission. Second by Tao. Motion carried 6-0. Item four, Julie Gessert, a request to, uh, for a certified survey map to create two outlots, which are under five acres within the town of Grand Rapids. The subject property is at 2840 Saratoga Street, parcel ID listed. Mr. Kearns clarified uh, that the city has extraterritorial control for subdivision plat review but not for zoning, and further summarize the request. Motion by Davin to approve the request as presented for a certified survey map to create two outlots which are under five acres within the town of Grand Rapids. Subject was previously identified. A second by Austin, motion carried 6-0. Item five, Happy Hippo Construction LLC, request for a certified survey map to create two outlots at 2211 8th Street South, South and dedicate right of way on 8th Street South, Goodnow Avenue and 10th Street South. Uh, Director Kearns provided an analysis and summary of the request. Uh, Larry Koopman uh, of Lambert and Lee spoke about concerns regarding lot lines. There was a motion by Goudreau to approve the request, a second by Blazer. The motion carried 6-0. Item six, uh, Dan Gunstein requests for site plan review to constru construct a car wash at 4128th Street South. Associate Planner Edmondson provided a summary of the item. Uh, Chairperson Blazer and other commissioners also discussed uh, specifics on the request, and there was a motion by Austin with a second by Goudreau to approve the request with eight conditions as outlined in the staff report. There was an added condition to this one that was not in the staff report, I believe, that's regarding the site plan and one-way ingress on the easternmost driveway of Dove Avenue and that shall be eliminated uh, subject to review, um, or it should, it, it should be one way or eliminated subject to review from the department and the engineering department. That motion carried 6-0. Item number seven was Anderson's bulk fuel storage 
public hearing and action on a request for a conditional use permit to construct bulk fuel storage tanks at 4000 Commerce Drive. Again, staff summarized the request. Public hearing opened at 4.33 p.m. Speaking against uh, is a list of individuals on file in our office. Speaking in favor, none. The public hearing closed at 4.35. The applicant uh, with the Andersons uh, discussed with the commission some specifics on the request uh, to which both the commission and um, staff engaged in further conversation. There eventually was a motion by Davin to approve the request with the four conditions outlined in the staff report and a second by Goudreau. That motion carried 6-0. Item number eight, Mario Dickens, public hearing and action on a request for a conditional use permit to operate truck trailer rental establishment at 711 East Grand Avenue. Staff summarized the request. The public hearing opened at 4.49 p.m. Again, we've got a list of spe those speaking against in our office. Uh, speaking in favor, none. The public hearing closed at 4.51 p.m. Again, there was additional conversation uh, from staff, the applicant, and the commission regarding specifics of the request and the site, in particular the driveway or driveways and the placement of the trucks and trailers on site. There was a motion by Austin, second by Goudreau, to approve the request subject to the eight conditions outlined in the staff report. That motion was carried 6-0. Item number nine uh, was a request by the Community Development Department to amend and a public hearing to amend Chapter 11 of the Zoning Ordinance, specifically Appendix B, 5.04, Overnight Lodging, to permit the permanent residence of an on-site manager as an accessory use within a dwelling unit. Staff summarized the request. There was a public hearing at 5.11 p.m. Speaking against or in favor were none. And there was an eventual motion by Commissioner Tao and a second by Davin to approve the request, and that motion carried 6-0. Finally, item number 10 was adjournment. Motion by Austin to adjourn, second by Goudreau. Motion carried 6-0. The meeting was adjourned at 5.13 p.m., and I submit that for your approval. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Ryan and seconded by Sherry. Any further questions, comments? Seeing none, please cast. Oh, hold on, Mr. Rayo. Ah, let's see, number, what is it, six? That's Kyle. Is this, uh, you Kyle, is it, you sure there's enough ingress, in, ingress, egress, whatever there for that car wash on 8th Street there? In and terms of the... Enough for the, so there won't be a backup of cars or anything? Yeah, in terms of the added... Uh, condition regarding the easternmost driveway on Dove. I think if that shrunk to a one-way, they would have the required separation from the intersection. Okay, that's. Uh... Yep. So it's either it's either that or the elimination of the Eighth Street Drive uh, into the property, and they've I think elected at this point to make the second driveway on Dove a one-way. Okay. Kyle, is there an ordinance for the? Which one was that? The, the overnight lodging? Number nine. Yes, I believe there should have been. I don't have the packet open, only the agenda. Um, yeah, it's not in the packet. Yeah, there was an ordinance drafted. I apologize if it maybe wasn't attached to the email to the clerk. Um, if you want, I can certainly, if you hold it out, I can go print copies of the ordinance and provide it to the commission, or to the, to the council, sorry. Actually, we'll have to hold that. We'll have to hold it over till the next meeting. Okay. Yes, I do have the oh. ordinance and ordinance form. Would you like me to print copies? Okay.
Good, Tom. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. <clears throat> I knew there was one more, I think. On the number uh, eight, Kyle, the um, uh, truck trailer rental establishment on East Grand. As I, uh, was reading through it and it had, had some, there was a, I, I guess a speaker against it, but, uh, it has a rental establishment for truck trailers, but then as I kept reading, it says, uh, they expressed concerns about signage layout of map, vehicle sales. Is any of that to take place on there? Is this a truck or just rentals? It's just rentals because it, it had the in here vehicle sales and it just raised an eye, opened my eyes when I read that. <laughs> yeah, so the conditional use is only for the truck trailer rental establishment. The owner, the business owner and property owner, one and the same, have identified additional uses that they want to operate on site, one of which is a like an, a print uh, shop, like a Xerox printing uh, type shop, a potential car sales lot, as well as I think another one or two retail type uses. And those are permitted within that zoning district. So from a review standpoint, there isn't, uh, with an existing building, there isn't a plan commission, site plan approval, or a conditional use required. However, they would still need to meet the parking requirements for those uses. So at some point, I would think as those uses start to become established, they might reach a tipping point where they just can't accommodate enough of the required parking on site to do all of the uses. Um, but I, I don't necessarily have a timeline of when they want to establish those uses. I think most important to them is the truck trailer rental and the printing uh, business. And then you know, over time, if, if it allows, they, they want to pursue other uses permitted within the code. Uh, and I, I guess I haven't paid attention that close lately, but I, the parking lot itself, I think, needed some repaving probably to be able to mark li parking lines in that, if my memory's right anyway. Um, are, will, are they going to be doing that? Because I think in here it had about that they'd have to be marking the parking uh, place spots and that, so is it going to... Is the paving going to be done enough for, so that they'll be able to mark it? Yeah, so one of, one of the conditions is that they provide an updated site plan to our office uh, so we can confirm that the patron parking and the truck trailer parking uh, are separate and that they can meet those required standards for size of parking stalls. But also one of the conditions was that they do stripe the lot so they need to provide the the pavement markings for those parking stalls with existing pavement however unless they're uh, renovating it or doing a full reconstruct they don't necessarily have to meet the uh, setbacks or the landscaping requirements until such time that they pursue that reconstruction okay kyle could you kind of explain the ordinance that was handed out i guess yeah, so the ordinance that's handed out, again, my apologies that it was not in the packet. Um, it was drafted prior, and the intent was that it was part of the, the council packet. But essentially, it, it permits the uh, creation of a permanent residence at an overnight lodging establishment. So if you've got a, uh, an existing uh, hotel, you could create a permanent dwelling unit under the code uh, if this amendment is approved. And I think it's, for us, I think from a zoning and a land use standpoint, it, it's not going to necessarily increase the intensity of the use. But I think we find that there's a, there's a desire for like an on-site manager who's operating the hotel to be able to reside on site to provide the 24-7 you know, care perhaps that the, the hotel needs. And right now you can't do that legally as uh, in the zoning code or um, most of the time if it's happening, it's happening in an existing hotel room, which doesn't have a second exit. It doesn't have proper firewall separation. So there are a lot of code uh, issues, building code issues that exist 
with this. So I don't think that if the ordinance is approved that every hotel in the city is going to now put an addition on, create separation for a separate dwelling unit under the code, but I think there might be um, some interest. I know one in particular where previously there were building permits that were issued to operate such use, and I do feel it is, it is fitting and appropriate within the community to, to permit such use as well. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay, seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. We are moving to item number nine, which is consider for adoption and action of the standing committees of the Common Council. The first one is Finance and Property Committee meeting held May 3rd. Matt? Thank you. The Finance and Property Committee met at 5.06 p.m. on Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022 in the Council Chambers at City Hall. The meeting was live on Wisconsin Rapids Community Media, Spectrum Channel 985 and Solaris Channel 3, online at www.wr-cm.org, or via WRCM's Roku app and will stream live on the City of Wisconsin Rapids Facebook page. All members of the Finance and Property Committee were present. Also in attendance were Alder, Alder Persons, Plock, Sue Schill, Kyle Kearns, Mayor Blazer, Paul Vollert, Tyler Mickelson, Jennifer Gossick, and Tim DeSorcy. A list of others in attendance is on file in the clerk's office. Item one, call to order. Chair Persons Acker called the meeting to order at 5.06 p.m. Item two, initial review of alcohol license renewals. The committee conducted an initial review of the alcohol license renewals. No action was taken. Item three, consider a request from Gordy's Pub and Grill LLC doing business as Gordy's Pub and Grill, Adam P. Hoffer, agent for retail Class B fermented malt beverages and Class B intoxicating liquor licenses for the premises located at 2962 State Highway 73 South. It was moved by Bemke, seconded by Veneman to approve. The motion carried three to zero. Item number four, consider a request from GPW LLC doing business as work. Alan G. Warzella, agent for class retail, for retail class B fermented malt beverages and class B intoxicating liquor licenses for the premises located at 212 West Grand Avenue. It was moved by Veneman, seconded by ben Bemke to approve. Motion carried three to zero. Item number five, consider a request from Wisconsin Rapids Ranger Baseball, Inc., doing business as Wisconsin Rapids Ranger Baseball, Christina L. Suring, agent for a six-month retail Class B fermented malt beverages license for the premises located at 1801 16th Street South. It was moved by Bemke, seconded by Veneman to, to approve. Motion carried three to zero. Item number six, Consider for approval the appointment of Christine Engelhart as successor agent for the retail Class A fermented malt beverages and Class A intoxicating liquor licenses for Dolgan Corp. LLC doing business as Dollar General Store number 21068 for the premises located at 820 8th Street South. It was moved by Bemke, seconded by Veneman to approve. Motion carried 3-0. Item number seven, consider for approval the appointment of Christine Engelhardt as successor agent for the retail Class A fermented malt beverages and Class A intoxicating liquor licenses for Dolgan Corp. LLC doing business at Dollar General Store number 10309 for the premises located at 951 West Grand Avenue. It was moved by Veneman, seconded by Bemke to approve, motion carried three to zero. Item number eight, consider for approval a temporary retail Class B fermented malt beverages license for Central Wisconsin Cultural Center 
2651 A Street South for live music on the patio event to be held on Friday, May 20th, 2022 from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It was moved by Bemke, seconded by Veneman to approve. Motion carried 3 to 0. Item number 9, consider for approval a temporary retail Class B fermented malt beverage license for Central Wisconsin Cultural Center located at 2651 A Street South for an open mic event to be held Friday, May 27th, 2022 from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. It was moved by Veneman, seconded by Bemke to approve. Motion carried 3 to 0. Item number 10, consider for approval a temporary retail class retail class B fermented malt beverages license for Central Wisconsin Cultural Center located at 2651 A Street South for an open mic event to be held on Friday, June 24th, 2022 from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. It was moved by Veneman, seconded by Bemke to approve. Motion carried 3 to 0. Consider a special, uh, sorry, item number 11, consider a special event application from Central Wisconsin BMX Club, Inc., including requests for closure of the Eastside Compost site on Saturday, Saturday, July 30th, 2022, and use of comps, compost site property for excess parking during the event for Badger State three-day national event to be held Friday, July 29th through Sunday, July 31st, 2022 at the BMX facility at 2220 East Riverview Expressway. It was moved by Veneman, seconded by Bemke to approve and also to include that if this type of event is proposed in the future, the clerk may approve it and it will not be necessary for committee to approve the closing of the compost site. Motion carried three to zero. Item number 12, consider phase two of the wayfinding sign project with graphic calls for fabrication and install. It was moved by Bemke and seconded by Veneman to approve phase two of the wayfinding sign project, specifically the second lesser graphic house bid for fabrication and install, including park signs LX-1 numbers 22A, 25, and 34A and not to exceed project cost of $30,000. Motion carried three to zero. Item 13, consider for approval an agreement with Advanced Disposal Service, Services Cranberry Creek Landfill LLC for the solid waste disposal services. It was moved by Bemke, seconded by Veneman to approve an agreement with Advanced Disposal Services Cranberry Creek Landfill LLC for solid waste disposal services. Motion carried three to zero. Item 14, consider for approval an agreement with Spielbauer Fireworks Company, Inc., Display Operator, Sky Painter Fireworks, LLC, for the city's 2022 4th of July fireworks display. It was moved by Veneman, seconded by Zacher to approve. Motion carried 3-0. to zero. Item 15, review and update grant management policy. It was moved by Bemke, seconded by Veneman to approve the updated grant management policy. Motion carried three to zero. Item 16, <clears throat> discussion regarding creating a comprehensive capital improvement program. The committee discussed creating a cap comprehensive capital improvements program. No action was taken. Item 17, review American Rescue Plan Act grant fund request. Committee reviewed American Rescue Plan grant fund request. No action was taken. Item 18, audit of the bills. It was moved by Bemke, seconded by Veneman to approve checks number 12432 to 12767. Motion carried three to zero. Item 19, set next meeting date. The next regular committee meeting will be held on Tuesday, June 7, 2022 at 5 p.m. Item 20, it was moved by Veneman, seconded by Zacher to adjourn. Motion carried three to zero. The meeting adjourned at 6.14 p.m. I entertain a motion to approve the minutes as presented. We have Sherry. Did you want to hold out an item? Yes. Okay. Which I, one? I just wanted to comment on number 12. Okay. Um, do you want to hold out for a separate vote or? No. I just oh. wanted to dis oh. discuss it. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a motion by Matt. Is there a second? Are you making a motion? Now I'm making a motion okay. to <laughs> approve the minutes. 
I beat you to it. Ryan beat you. <laughs> All right. We have a motion by Ryan, seconded by Jay. Cherry. Thank you. Um, around the community, I think the signs look really nice. Um, the cost, I guess I wasn't quite aware of that. I know I voted for it in last June when I was new and wasn't really completely 100% certain. Um, I know the first phase, I believe, was um, tax, uh, room tax dollars. Correct. Is that correct? Okay. Um, Same with so, the next phase, too, or this phase. Right. And were we just expecting, I guess, that that's how phase one, two, and three were all going to be supported? Because there is a stage three as well, correct? Okay. No, stage two is, is it. And we've substantially reduced uh, what phase two looks like just because the, the costs are substantial mm -hmm. um, if we were to continue with exactly what was planned by Corbin, the sign designer. Okay. Um, are they solar powered? No, they are not. But there is the capability in the future to install um, some solar, small solar panels with down lighting. We passed on that initially because it would add about twelve thousand dollars to the eighty-three, eighty-two thousand dollar project already. But if and we've gotten some feedback from citizens that it would be nice, especially the downtown ones, if they had some down lighting at night. So mm -hmm. we could always come back and and install those. And that's that's where I guess I was going with that. I mean, we spent a lot of money um, on those signs, and they are beautiful. Um, but in the evening hours, I mean, they're, they're not helpful because, I mean, you have your phone, but still, it would be very nice if there was some lighting, a solar power. I mean, I think that would be nice. Um, if the signs, when I touched them and looked at them, I mean, they're, they're it, you know. So if anything were to move or a parking lot wasn't free parking anymore or anything like that, what is the approximate cost per sign that we would have to pay to, re, you know, to redo that sign or if it was vandalized or anything like that? So we do have a warranty on the signs. It's, it's a year warranty for basically anything that happens, um, you know, aside from uh, citizen vandalizing the sign or something like that. Um, I think it depends on the sign. There was a substantial difference from $400 for an on-street bike sign to $6,000 plus for one of the pedestrian kiosks. So... You know, they could be substantial if there's something wrong with them, or it could be very minimal, again, depending on the fix. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there any further questions or comments on the... Oh, go ahead, Matt. I'm uh, just curious, since it was brought up, is there any way to get insurance on something like that, or no? That I am not sure. I think uh, I could... Yeah, it's insured through our, through our state insurance, or... Yeah, we just have to, we'll list them with the, our insurance company and they be considered uh, property out in the open and I think the deductible on that is 2500 Thank you, Tim. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. Congratulations on your licenses. All right, we can oh. move on to item number B, Public Works Committee meeting held on May 5th. Ryan. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Public Works Committee met on Thursday, May 5th, 2022 in the Council Chambers at City Hall and via remote video conference. Myself, Sherry Evanson, and Dennis Pollock were in attendance. Others attending are listed below. Item number one, call the meeting to order. The meeting was called to order at 5.01 p.m. Item two, review engineering and street department monthly activity report. The report was reviewed. Item three, consider resolution to address preliminary resolutions and pending assessments. Motion by Evanson, second by Pollock to approve the re resolution revoking prior preliminary resolutions and special assessments action. Motion carried 3-0. Item four, review and consider preliminary resolutions for public improvements on the following streets. A, Oak Street from East Jackson Street to 16th Street North, proposed in 2023. B, Shorewood Terrace from 1st Street North to South Dead End, proposed in 2023. 
C, Apricot Street, from Broadway Street to 11th Street North, and from Broadway Street to, um, from Franklin to Apricot Street, proposed in 2023. And D, 9th Street South, Chestnut Street to Peace Street, proposed in 2023. Motion by Evanson, second by Pollock, to approve the preliminary resolutions for public improvements as presented. Motion carried 3-0. Item five. Review parking ordinance change on 4th Street South, the west side from East Grand Ave to Oak Street. Motion by Austin, second by Evan Evanson, to approve two-hour parking restrictions on both sides of 4th Street South between East Grand Ave and Oak Street between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Motion carried 3-0. Item 6, review parking ordinance change on 7th Street North, the east side from Wisconsin Street to Baker Street. Motion by Austin, second by Pollock to approve. Removing ordinance 27.13 IA 19N, no parking. 7th Street North, the east side from Wisconsin Street and Baker Street. Motion carried 3-0. Item seven, review parking ordinance change on 14th Ave South, the west side between Alton Street and Chase Street. Motion by Austin, second by Evanson to approve removing ordinance 27.131C17, no parking, stopping, or standing on 14th Ave South, the west side between Alton Street and Chase Street from May 1 to September 1, except Sunday between 6 a.m. and noon. Motion carried 3-0. Review the draft request for proposals, sorry, item eight. Review the draft request for proposals for the rail feasibility study to address noise and vehicle delays. Motion by Evanson, second by Pollock, to approve the draft request for proposals for alternatives to vehicle delays and rail usage. Motion carried 3-0. Item nine, review the referral list. There was no items to up update, and item 10 was adjournment. And with that, I submit the public works report to, to council for approval. Thank you. We need to hold out, was it five, six, and seven? Or, or, okay. They can approve. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, we don't have ordinances attached. So, we'll have to bring back the ordinances next month to be, to be approved. So, you can vote on the whole report unless somebody needs something held out. Okay. So we have a motion, was a motion by Ryan? A motion by Jay, seconded by Dean. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, um, please cast your ballots. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. Move on to item C, Human Resource Committee meeting held May 10th. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Human Resource Committee <coughs> met on Tuesday, May 10th at 2 p.m. Um, all members were present. A list of others is on file in the clerk's office. Um, Meeting was called to order at 222. Item number two, discuss and consider for approval of the commercial driving, driver's license policy. Um, there is an attachment. Um, motion by Delaney, seconded by Rayom to approve the commercial driver's license policy as presented. Motion carried three to zero. Item number three, discuss and consider for approval a seasonal gardener position with the Park and Rec Department. There was a motion by Rayom, seconded by Bemke to approve the seasonal gardener position within the parks. And Recreation Department, motion carried two to zero with one abstention. Item number four, discuss and consider for approval an IT intern with the Information and Technology Department. Motion by Delaney, seconded by Rayom to approve the IT intern with the Information and Technology Department at the rate of $15 per hour. Motion carried three to zero. Item number five, discuss and consider for approval the renewal of employee health insurance with a Spirus Health Plan, effective July 1st, 2022, there was a motion by Bemke, seconded by Rayom, to, to approve as presented. A, the renewal of a contract for employee health insurance with a Spirus Health Plan, 
effective July 1st, 2022. B, the renewal of an administrative dental plan with Delta Dental effective July 1st, 2022. C, PPO and premier options on the dental plan. And D, the addition of checkup plus on the dental plan so that diagnostic and preventive dental services as defined in the plan would, would not be applied to the individual annual maximum. Motion carried three to zero. Item number six, discuss and consider for approval employee health and dental insurance rates effective July 1st, 2022. There was a motion by Reom, seconded by Delaney to approve the health em employee health and dental rates as presented effective July 1st, 2022. Health insurance premium rates will be reduced by 3.4% and dental premium rates will remain the same. Motion carried three to zero. Item number eight, the committee may go into closed session under section 19851E, Wisconsin Stats, which reads, deliberating and negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of, investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business when other, whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. There was a motion by Reom, seconded by Bemke to go into closed session. A roll call vote was taken. All members voted in the affirmative. Motion carried 3-0. In closed session, the committee discussed WRPPA's recent re non-ratification of the city's tentative agreement with WRPPA and discussed, discussed negotiation strategy. Item number eight was adjournment. Uh, motion by Reom, seconded by Bemke to adjourn. Motion carried 3-0. Meeting adjourned in closed session at 3.15 p.m. And with that, I'll submit for the adoption of the Human Resource Committee report. So uh, let's, Patrick first. I'd just like to hold out three for the time being. Okay, and Sherry? I was going to hold out three as well. Okay. And was that a motion, Jay? Yes, please. So a motion by Jay. Button. Let somebody beat you. A motion by Matt, seconded by Jay. Uh, item three, Patrick. I just wanted to hold it out for this oh, second vote. Uh, I'll let Sherry talk if she wants okay. to. Okay. Sherry. Thank you. Um, I did look at the packet. Um, I wasn't able to review or view the meeting that took place, but I know I was looking through the job description. And I was just kind of, I guess, confused um, of why we need this position. I thought that. Um, the parks and building superintendent, um, their staff took care of this. I don't see Jake here to ask. Um, Go ahead. Did you, were you going to say something? Or can you respond? I, I guess what's happened over the years is or Ryan's um, the, there was a group of gardeners that took care of it, and the gardeners are slowly but surely leaving us. So um, this was not part of uh, the, the seasonal staff's regular duties. So they're asking for these two part-time additional positions just for the zoo, if I understand it correctly. That's the way I understand it also. Okay, because I, I kind of heard about that, but I, I don't see that it was reflected in here. Um, it just talks about the beauty of plants, outdoor grounds, and trees in a garden, um, designing, producing, renewing, and preserving outdoor spaces. Um, Gardeners can work in local parks and city-owned landscape areas. So I guess I was just, um, you know, trees, trimming trees, hedges, um, light machinery. Um, so I, I, I just, I mean, I know the master gardeners um, took care of, I know years ago they used to plant the flowers along the river bank um, by the bell tower and used to take care of all those things. But this seems just a little bit more in-depth than than just planting the flowers. So I guess, do we not have park staff to do this any longer? Ryan, can you speak to this? It, it, my understanding is just the zoo. Um, because they cannot, there's such a vast amount of plantings there that the park staff can't keep up with that. And so Ryan could probably speak to it better. Was that? And, the, and so they've, they haven't been attended for, I think, the last two years now since 
the master gardener stopped maintaining the zoo and it's kind of getting out of control. And so that's the plan was to, I think there's two part-time ladies potentially that will maintain or hopefully get the zoo in order with the plantings. And so getting back to my question, I know the master gardeners took care of some of the flowers and that kind of stuff, but the parks department took care of the trees and those kinds of things. So right. now all of a sudden there's no, there's no staff to do that. Well, the staff that... will continue to take, take care of trees because we have arborists in the city that take, maintain trees. I, my understanding is that these would only be for flowers in, in working in the zoo. Okay, I guess I would just, <clears throat> I'd rather have the job description state that because it says trimming trees, new trees. Um, to me, those are things that I would think that the parks department would take care of. And I wish... I wish the superintendent was here so I could ask him directly. Um, mm -hmm. It's not that I don't like this. I just wish that it would specify if it is just for the zoo, then it was just for the zoo, and it didn't have all the stuff that I think that the grounds crew for the parks department would do. But that's thank you. Any further questions or comments on the item? Oh, Tom? Go ahead. So does, it, <clears throat> does this just have to do with the zoo then? Ryan, that's my understanding, correct? I mean, that, that was mine. The ride, I was getting somewhat confused here, yeah, so that, that was my, my understanding. My understanding is the zoo. Is there anything up at the aquatics with all those plantings there? The only thing that was talked about that I recollect was the uh, was the zoo. Was the zoo, and how oh, it looked in the condition that it was, and mm -hmm. uh, bring it back to life or whatever the looks of it. Right. So. And then the money would come from the existing budget, so there's no increase to the budget. Jay. I believe there's a gentleman in the audience that would like to speak to the issue. Yes. Ray, come to the mic. Make sure the green button's on. Um, it's regarding zoo, or is this master gardeners we're still talking about? Okay. Um, well, Master Gardner's not at the zoo anymore. <laughs> not at the zoo. Okay. So, um, talking to residents that were at the farmer's market and a couple things that were going on at the time with the 100 year, it seemed I was tracking the, the Master Gardeners at the time and the fact that they've moved on, but there's a couple of people in place that just don't have any leadership, but they're very good at planting. And then there's some, um, I identified a couple of Amish families that are interested in helping a little bit. So I've got those names and cards that I could get. I just didn't know where to get those to. And then with the zoo, it's, um, they were working on the armory barracks at one point, and they're trying to get somebody with a bronze star to organize a little bit more over there and I don't know if that's part of the armory or not but you might find a volunteer there that's all I've got thank you Ray yep all right any further discussion oh I did that backwards so we need to vote on the balance of the report, which is what the motion and the second's for. Um, so vote everything besides number three. So please cast your ballots. Out of practice. That mo so the balance of the report, that motion carried eight A, zero nays. Now regarding item number three, what are your wishes?
and a motion by Jay and seconded by Matt. Is there any further discussion? I guess the only thing is, is the gentleman that was just speaking, if he has a list of volunteers, I'm sure there's plenty of work, if not at the zoo. Um, I can who, connect who him with Jake. He'll, he'll get those to Jake? Yeah, I can connect Ray with Jake. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jerry. I just, like I said, I, I, I just wish that the, the job description was appropriate because nowhere in there does it say just the zoo. Um, and if we're making a job, even, I mean, I know it's not a substantial job year round, but I wish that it re reflected what was talked about tonight. So I, I won't be voting for it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. To address this, that situation, uh, <coughs> Sherry's concern, can we can we address that? I mean, or do you want to hold it over for Jake to take to tell us speak to it? Or I don't know what the majority of you want to do here. Mayor, go ahead, Jay. Can can we just? As Tom suggested, amend it so it is specifically for the zoo. It's we're into May already. By the time we get people on board and at the zoo, we could have a mess over there. So, if it could be amended, Sue. It could. I mean, I guess I'm thinking. But do you? I mean, what if you want them to work in other areas? I think primarily they can be zoo. But what if? Or or you know, I guess if you just don't want want them anywhere else, that's. That's fine. We could add it uh, somewhere in the uh, in the job description that this will be primarily. for zoo for zoo only, or primarily at the zoo. Uh, however, you wish to do it, but you can certainly amend. Does this have to be unanimous? Can we, we, I think we can just amend it to say that it's just uh, for the zoo only. Let's vote on what we have, if, if it has to come back or be amended. I, because with Jake not here, I, I can't speak to what his intentions were. It was, the night we talked about it, it was for the zoo, but... Um, if he's got other projects for him, do we really want to limit them? Uh, hold on, Matt's first. I, I, I'm just in agreement to keep it somewhat simple and say it's for the zoo, but it's also they can be used for other projects around the city when needed. I'm open for that. Sherry? I just, um, it, like I said, I'm not against this. It just, um, if if it was talked about that it was for the zoo, why wasn't it in here for the zoo? But I mean, if it's not just for the zoo, it's for other things in the community, I'm fine with that. But everyone kept saying it was for the zoo, and it's it just, to me, the, the job description should match what we're talking about, and it didn't. So that's just, I have a problem with that. But I mean, if it's for the city, but I mean, have... Now, someone we had someone talk tonight saying that there could be a group that would do this. So, how much research was done on it that we've tried to find people to do it? Or, I mean, I know time is the essence because it is May um, that we're not just rushing in it just because we want to do this. That's just what my thought process was. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Well, in my recollection is, and I guess at least right now I'm going to vote for it, and as I did it. At the committee, but uh, my recollection, it's it's for the zoo, and that's uh, so that that's what my vote will be going for. Because um, that 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 was that was my understanding of it anyway. Is Jake on Zoom? Jake's on Zoom. Jake, are you there? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, 
speak your thoughts. I just I just joined in, so I just bought the last uh, 20 seconds. I think Tom and Sherry were talking about uh, the usage of the seasonal gardeners. That's correct. Okay. Uh, we brought this up just because last year we tried uh, to manage all the gardens at the zoo. And without the Master Gardener program anymore, it's either we take out sections of um, landscape areas and flower beds because we as our staff just we can't keep up with the zoo, Veterans Park, the Aquatic, Aquatic Center, Demis Park. Um, I could go on and on about other different areas that we have to maintain. So adding two people to work 15 hours a week, $10.50, it fit into this year's budget. Um, so that's pretty much where the thought process came. Does that answer your questions? Yes, thank you, Jake. I was, because it didn't state how many hours either unless I missed it. So that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, so it can be, um, I mean, it can be roughly, depending on when this passes, depending on when we get people to apply, we're, we're guesstimating roughly a season about 12, 12 weeks that this will go on. So 30 hours, 30 hours a week at 1050 came out to, I think it was like $3,700 for, for, the, for these gardeners. Thank you, Jake. So yep. It is. Okay. Any further questions? Good. Sorry, I just have one. So even though this is seasonal, so there was a... Um, formality that went through um, with the HR committee saying what the budget was and everything else was good through the finance and everything else like it was budgeted for. Is that, I wasn't at the meeting, Jay. Right, uh, just oh, Tim. from a budget standpoint, you know, each year we put into the budget an estimated number of positions at a, at a rate for how many hours and from my understanding is that with all the summer help that this is within that original summer help budget. Thank you. <coughs> okay, any other questions, comments? We're almost there. Uh, seeing no further comments, uh, please cast your ballots. Maybe Tyler, do you have a cord? We have a laptop dying over here. Uh, that motion carried seven A's, one abstention. Um, well, we got item uh, D, which is the Human Resource Committee held May 17th, being tonight. Thank you again, Mayor. Um, Human Resources met Tuesday, May 17th at 5.30 p.m. All members were present. A uh, list of others in attendance is in the clerk's office. Item number one, call the meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. Just um, in case. Item number two, discuss and consider for approval the changes to the seasonal LTE pay rates. Um, There was a motion by Bemke, seconded by Delaney, to approve the pay rates for the seasonal LTEs as follows. LTEs possessing a valid CDL will receive 80% of the hourly rate of common labor. LTEs not possessing a valid CDL will receive 75% of the hourly rate of common labor. Motion carried, 3-0. Um, item number three was adjournment. Motion by Delaney, second by Rayon. To adjourn, motion carried. Meeting adjourned at 534. I make a motion to approve the Human Resource Committee minutes. But Unless somebody beats you. Ah. 
<laughs> he got second in motion. Uh, motion by Sherry, second by Matt. Is there any discussion on the item? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. We're on to item 10, which is reports of other committees, commission, boards, and department reports. Any questions, comments, what's your wishes? Hey, we got a motion by Jay. And a second by Matt. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. Welcome back, Mike. That motion carried seven A's and one abstention. We're on to item 11, referral to committees. Um, go ahead, Sherry. Okay, and Sue can tell me to shut up if I'm not <laughs> if it's not appropriate. But I'm just not sure who I could send these referrals to. Um, we do get monthly update reports from wastewater, water and light, streets, engineering, you know, public works, planning commission, police, fire, ordinance officer, and housing authority, um, because they have commissions or committees that over some oversee them. Um, some are very in-depth, just like our packet, that tell us exactly what the committee or the, the department's been going through as far as um, what they've done for the month. Um, but I, you know, like for HR, there's s just some things that it would be nice to see just besides agenda items, you know, like how many job openings there are, how many positions have been filled, how many terminations, voluntary, you know, how many applications were received for each position. Um, you know, and the updates, like with the training and those kinds of things. If we had monthly reports that kind of just, like I said, not to micromanage, but just to see what, you know, what those situations were. So I don't know. I mean, that maybe could go to the HR referral. But, you know, like IT, they don't have, per se, an oversight committee, except if they're asking for money for finance. But, um, you know, it'd be, inf you know, informative to find out, you know, servers or what kind of security training the employees are going through obviously hackers are on the rise um you know what projects they're working with are they working with like the the aquatic center trying to get you know some of the stuff that the park and commission were doing um you know and another thing mr mayor i think too um not that we tell you what to do but i just i know a lot of people ask you know well what does the mayor do all you know what kind of things they're involved in um, you know, enlightening the community and citizens to have some insight into what, you know, great things they can expect from the mayor's office. You know, what kind of things are you working on to bring things here? So, you know, um, the leader of the government, the citizens, and we as council members, um, you know, transparency is best, and it would just be enlightened just to hear from different departments, just to see what's going on on a monthly basis, not to micromanage, but just so that we're aware of, oh, because... If they're not listed on the agenda, we can't talk about it. So it's just those kinds of things, but I'm not sure where to send those referrals to or how, what the process would be. Thanks. <coughs> I think Jennifer had referred or given me the one referral regarding, uh, and I guess I would just call it expectations of departments and department heads regarding communication with council and reports. And I was going to have it be on legislative, but HR, I guess, could it could be an HR thing. I guess I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. But we can definitely put that on on an agenda just to talk about. I, don't, I know one of your referrals said to actually have department heads report to committees, like have a, as for an oversight, is that? Or was that more just, is it more about the reports, doing the reports? Just to see kind of what's going on. Like I said, if I can't, I mean, yes, I can call IT. I could call you and talk mm -hmm. about things. But I'm sure that, you know, if I have a question, there's probably other right. people instead of the department head mm -hmm. getting the same runaround in, an, not runaround, I don't mean it that way. But it's informative for the citizens right. and for all of us. to. But you're talking simply about the department heads giving a report at, at council time, not, because I thought one of the referrals was having, 
department heads report to a committee like uh well, like, right like i said like it i mean i know they go you know they the mayor right. they go to the mayor but um as far as you know if it was a money based thing it would go to finance right. or right. you know and legislative or things like that okay. but just those kinds of things because it's nice to know like I said, it's not to micromanage, but it's if there's things that, like what projects they're working on, if we had questions or maybe there's things that we could think of to help, mm -hmm. you know, the city as a whole, but we, we can't if it's not anywhere. Right. And, I, I, and when I say report, I meant like have a reporting and oversight relationship with each department had that with a committee, but that isn't what you're, you're, you're talking about more just giving a communication, a report to the council at the end of the meeting or as part of the meeting. As part of the meeting, right. I'd like okay. I'd like to see that because I know, right. you know, a lot of times some sure. committees don't have those attachments either. They're always handed out at council. Well, if you're not there and you're watching it, you know, I mean, it, sometimes you can't talk about it because you don't know what they're seeing. So it's just I want more transparency that way and just as a benefit, not a negative. Thank you. Uh, Matt. I just want to voice my support with everything you just said, Sherry. I think those are great ideas. Um, we're all, most of us, working day jobs, and you just don't find the time to be able to ask the questions you want to ask. So I think it's great. And any way you can get the legislative committee more active, I think that that's great also. I think that it serves a broader purpose. So if we can utilize them more, then we should do that. Thank you. And Thanks, so, Matt. Sorry. Go ahead, Sherry. Just to kind of go off of what Matt was saying, um, I mean, I know like IT doesn't have an oversight committee. You know, they they talk to the mayor. Mm -hmm. but, but that's how our system's set up. You know? Right. We're not and, a county system. Right, and mm -hmm. that's not what I'm, nope. I'm trying to get at at all. But it's just like sometimes it's nice if a if a if a department has some issues or something like that. Speaking as a group, as a committee, sometimes is more helpful as well. So that's uh, just a thought. Too. And a lot of times, what they're working on is what you've approved in the budget process. That's usually what they're working on. Um, any other referrals? Well, I guess information at council referrals follow up to, to Jennifer. Uh, you don't have any, do you? Nope. Okay. Seeing none, we're on to item 12, which is adjournment. We have a mo motion by Jay, second by Matt. Any, well, there's no discussion on that. Please cast your ballots to adjourn. Motion carried eight days, zero nays. Have a good night.